So, Dr. Ben Benoulis here. Tonight's uh, presentation is called Healing Your Digestion or How to Have Great Digestion Without Pills, Powders, or Potions. Okay, so tonight's presentation is for you. This is not for everybody, but this is for you if you want more out of life, are willing to make changes, people who want to treat the root cause of their problem. Not for people who want a quick fix, think I have some like uh, magic potion hiding behind a secret door, or people who just want to suppress symptoms and not treat the root cause. So today we're going to talk about how to have regular painless digestion, how to have confidence knowing that your digestion is not going to interfere with your social life, your hobbies, your work, anything like that, and how to get to a place where your body is no longer controlling you and you are just living a normal life. You're, you're in control of it instead of it controlling you. So, specifically what we're gonna talk about today, what causes these problems, why they're so prevalent, what body system is commonly overlooked in the role of this condition, and why, why many other gut health experts aren't talking about it, and, uh, or don't know about it, or haven't considered it, and then, Beneficial dietary strategies effective for busy working people. So, we have a finite amount of time tonight. I want to respect everybody's time. Okay, we can only do so much in an hour, but um, we'll get through a lot of stuff. Uh, if you like what you see and you think there's a chance for synergy, a good fit between us, we can talk about how to go deeper together at the end. Uh, just ask that to keep things running smoothly. We just hold all questions to the end, okay? because there's a lot to cover. So please, um, any glowing rectangles you got, put them on silent, turn them off. We um, want your 100% attention tonight. Um, so take notes if you want to, but you're gonna get the most like focusing your time here, okay? So, I mean, this is your life, right? So this is like, here's the information. Give, your, give yourself the benefit of 100% attention. Thank you. So, um, talking about digestive health. It's a common problem. I actually just read an article yesterday that said 15% of Americans have IBS, which I thought was like an absurdly high number because I knew it was like kind of a common problem, but like people don't really talk about it too much. So it's kind of hard to really understand the scope of it, but uh, it's like super common and nobody's talking about it because for the most part people are embarrassed about it, don't want to talk about it, that kind of thing. It's loud. Okay, <laughs> so, um, so uh, everybody experiences these conditions differently, okay? Um, some people it's pain after meals, some people it's um, bowel irregularity, discomfort, gas, bloating. Uh, some people have, you know, worse symptoms, blood in the stool, all kinds of gross stuff we don't need to get into the details of, okay? Um, when talking with a lot of people who have these conditions, oftentimes, they're getting shuffled around to like multiple providers, all these tests, can't really figure out what's going on, trying out these different like supplements and pills and powders, and a lot of times they're really not getting anywhere. And uh, it's starting to interfere with, you know, their like, ability to do their job, their ability to like hang out with their friends, their ability to do hobbies they enjoyed. I was just talking with a woman today who like doesn't even want to go out with her friends anymore because she's worried about like, what am I gonna eat? And if people offer me drinks, I don't want to drink alcohol because I know it affects it. And I, I have all this anxiety about like just going out, that I, I'm not even social anymore. And so people feel like um, you know, their body's in control of them instead of the other way around. But what if you're able to have control of your body instead of it no longer controlling you and you could just live your normal life and not have your digestion be interfering with it constantly? So stick around, we'll answer that. Um, so. Just a little bit about me. Um, I've been dealing with this, I've been on a journey with this for about eight years. Uh, 2010, I started having, like noticing like something was off. Like cert after certain meals, we'd have like indigestion here and there, and then like over the course of a year, of that year, it, um, oh thanks. Yeah, you got another example. All right. So over the, over the course of that year, um, it just got to the point where it was like, after every meal, I was hurting. And then I was having all these other symptoms and it was like, so severe to the point like sometimes, 
I have to like after dinner is like go lie down and just be like, Ugh, and just like clutch my sides for like an hour in like massive amounts of pain. Didn't want to move, and um, it was like seriously interfering with my life. I remember I had like my my um, my laptop bag at work, and it was just full of pills of like Pepto Bismol and Tums and all that stuff. Um, and so things came to a head. I think things I had like a rock bottom where it was like it got really bad. And uh, I would went out with some friends to a concert, and um, you know I was like, okay, I'm not gonna like drink or eat any junk food or anything that's gonna like throw me off. But then you know you're out with your friends, they're like, well, let's buy you a beer, and you're like, no, 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 that's okay. No, we're gonna buy you a beer. It's like, oh, I don't want to drink the beer because it's like, you know, the gluten in it's gonna throw me off. The alcohol is gonna throw me off. Friends are buying me drinks, had a few drinks, I'm like, okay, no, this is like, and it's gonna affect me, whatever. You know, it's too late now. And then, like, on the way home, you're like, oh, let, let's stop for pizza. It's like, oh, no, 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 let's not stop. But it's like, you've had a few drinks, you're like, oh, let's stop for pizza. Like, it's already gonna be bad. And I know, like, the dairy and the gluten and all that is gonna just make it worse, but whatever. So, on the way home, I'm just like, I'm, Ride my bike home, I'm just like in intense pain. End up like throwing up on the side of the road. Come home, throw up in the front lawn. In, just in intense pain. Just end up passing out on my couch, waking up the next day, still in intense pain, smelling like the vomit on my breath, and just being like, man, like I gotta do something with my life because this is like, I can't keep living like this. I can't keep <laughs> like being in this much pain, like not being able to do, you know, simple things, right? So that kind of set me out on a journey. Um, and so one of the things I did was, you know, I would go see various doctors and, and I would say like, so does this have anything to do with what I'm eating? And they would say, oh, well, no, 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 this doesn't have anything to do with what you're eating. And at the time I was like, oh yeah, well of course, the doctor says it doesn't have anything to do with the food I'm eating, must not have anything to do with the food I'm eating. Uh, but then, you know, if you think about it logically, it's like there's this tube that runs inside of you, right? It's like 36 feet long, okay, starts in your mouth, ends out here, and the inside of that tube is diseased, inflamed, and irritated. And the only thing that passes through this tube is the food that you eat. And so what they're proposing is that the reason that it's diseased, inflamed, and irritated has nothing to do with the one thing that passes through it which this totally just fails the common sense sniff test, right? So, um, you know, medical community, they, you know, they don't, teach, they don't teach nutrition in medical school, so most medical doctors just say, oh no, it must have nothing to do with it, you know? Um, and so, and a lot of times it's easy to sort of overlook this, right? It's like, well, everybody else is eating the same food, nobody else has these problems that I have, um, so it must not be the food, right? Like, I must just be plagued with just this bad luck. Um, but the, the truth is, is that's not the case. And for a lot of people, it's just like, they don't want to even have the conversation of like, oh, I might have to change what I eat because no one wants to change their diet, right? So, um, let's see, the food we eat today is not the same food we ate even 30 years ago. Um, so it's something like now Americans get 93% of their calories from processed foods. They're essentially like made in a factory. They're not totally different from anything that like grows out of the ground or um, you know grows off of a tree. Uh, the foods are genetically modified. In theory, not a problem. But the problem is that they're have genetically modified to be able to like produce a much heavier uh, to withstand a much heavier load of pesticides. So it's like there's more pesticides now in the food. Than ever there was. Take something like um, GMO corn. Corn normally produces something called BT toxin, which kills bugs. Okay, specifically, it kills bugs, but they, when they ingest it, their stomach explodes. Now we genetically modified the corn to produce way more BT toxin. Okay, so now and you know we're feeding the corn. You know it's not just in corn. Corn is used in all these products. It's fed to cattle. It's like it's in everything, right? So BT toxin is in everything. And it's like, at a certain level of toxicity, it's making bugs' stomachs explode, okay? But, like, we're eating, like, way more of it, and there's this epidemic of digestive disease, 
And of course, it's like, well, is it implicated? We don't really have the data to say yes or no, but I, I think it's like a smoking gun, honestly. Um, and so, like I talked about, the food is like heavily laden with synthetic chemicals, pesticides, heavy metals, all these environmental pollutants. Okay. And so, like I said, condition is a modern epidemic. 15% was the number I just read yesterday. So, if we want to think about like what food should we be eating, I like this chart. Okay. Probably can't read most of the text. But um, here we have carnivore, omnivore, herbivore, frugivore, human. Okay. And so, we can just kind of look at a bunch of different traits. All right. And we see that like the carnivores and the omnivores have these really sharp teeth because they essentially need to, you know, kill other animals for food. Um, they don't cook the animals, they just literally kill them and eat them right on the spot. Uh, herbivores are eating mostly grass. Humans can't really eat grass. Um, so a frugivore is uh, all the anthropod apes, okay? Chimpanzees, bonobos, um, the great apes. All right, and they are the ones that are closest genetic relatives. That our common ancestor is about um, is about uh, like 15 million years prior. Okay, so we're closest related to them. Um, and so we have the close in terms of like digestive tract, jaw structure, all these things. We're, we're of, of any of these, we match closely with the frugivores. Okay, frugivores don't eat meat. They don't eat um, grass. All right, they eat primarily fruit, leafy greens, and like a small amount of bugs. Okay, but don't worry, I'm not telling anybody to eat bugs. Okay. <laughs> so that leaves the optimal foods for digestion. It's pretty simple. This is like not rocket surgery, and I almost feel ridiculous making a slide about it. But fruits and leafy green vegetables. Okay, and then you have salads and smoothies, which are just fruits and vegetables, and in other forms that people like to eat them in. Okay. And so, you know, I have people come into my office and they're like, oh yeah, I, like, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. You know, they're like, you know, oftentimes like well overweight and um, it's like, you know, if you were eating lots of fruits and vegetables, probably wouldn't have the problem you're reporting to me. Um, so just to give you an idea, the USDA tells people to eat five servings a day. Okay. And a serving is like, three quarters of a banana or something. Like it's not that much, right? But the average American gets less than two, okay? And mostly in the form of tomato sauce on pizza and deep fried potato french fries, okay? So not really like the healthy version, like the highly processed version. Um, what I tell people is uh, if you actually take your health seriously, you should be shooting for like 12 a day. And then, you know, if you've got like a serious disease pathology, you work on 20, 30 plus, okay? You want to get a picture? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So, if you only get one lesson from this entire presentation it's on this slide, so pay attention. Everybody wants to think of fruit as a snack. It's like, fruit should be a meal. Like, if you look at any ape in nature, they eat fruit as a meal. They go to a mango tree, and they pick them, and they eat them, until they're full, and then they move on, okay? So um, it's, it's sort of a bizarre concept in the modern day of like, you eat an entire meat, a bowl of peaches just as a meal, like that's absurd. But like, based on uh, science, it's, it's like the optimal food for humans, okay? As far as like, all right, it has the best nutrient profile. It has fiber, which feeds the good bacteria, slows the absorption of blood sugar, um, helps all kinds of ways with digestion. Um, and so it's like the easiest on digestion leaves behind the least amount of metabolic waste and um, summertime guys so like all right so this is like the kitchen situation in Dr. Ben's house okay we've got like the mango stash is super good the peach stash is decent banana stash is in good shape okay and these are ripe bananas all right this is when they're starting to get the brown spots this is like peak time to be able to eat them. That's going to be the, the sweetest and the easiest to digest and the most nutrition. Okay. So, move on. It's not all about the food. Um, anybody ever notice that um, when they
they get stressed out or go th going through a difficult time that their digestive issues get worse? Okay. All right, so now we have to think one level up. What controls digestion? There's a master control system that controls every other organ system in the body, every muscle, tissue, organ, gland, and so on. Uh, so just a little like Lord of the Rings, like kind of one system to rule all the other systems, right? Um, and that is the nervous system, okay? Your brain sends signals down your spinal cord to everything here, okay? It's the, it's the big boss, controls everything, all right? And so the nervous system is subdivided into to two parts, okay? You have what's called the, the sympathetic system, is also called like the fight or flight system, and then the um, parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest, the calm system. And uh, in modern day, this is on overdrive for everybody. This is like, you know, because there's so much stress, okay? There's like, you know, jobs, traffic, pollution, bosses, you know, um, angry people, uh, upset significant others, um, you know, unexpected bills, uh, TV news, politics, okay? All these things are just like stressing that sympathetic nervous system, getting that fight or flight response. So what happens in the fight or flight response? Pupils expand. Breathing gets faster, heart pumps faster, pumps more um, blood to the, to the muscles to be able to fight or run away, okay? One of the things it does is it actually deactivates the gut, okay? This is like, if you get one piece of physiology information tonight, this is it, okay? Because if you are in a stressful situation, like say 10,000 years ago, you're being chased by a bear, like, your brain does not care about digesting food. It's like, get away from the bear or fight, okay? And digesting food is a very metabolically expensive endeavor. Because you have 36 foot long tube of essentially muscle which has to squeeze things along, okay? So that's a lot of, a lot of wattage that can be appropriated elsewhere. It doesn't consider this mission critical. So people live in this, this fight or flight state pretty much chronically, maybe at a low level, but chronically to where the gut is almost never active. Uh, conversely, with the, the parasympathetic state, it actually upregulates gut activity. Okay, so just to give you an idea here, all right, this is, I love this video. So, this is a guy, this is, you know, one of these GoPro um, cameras, and he's just riding his bike in the woods, okay, minding his own business. All right, and what you'll notice is that he'll turn to the side here, and that's a bear, right? And immediately you take a deep breath. Just watching the video, you're kind of like, oh my God, is this guy gonna get away from the bear? You might feel your heart beating faster, okay. So while well, this is happening, do you think this guy's body is worried about like fighting off a virus? No. Or worried about like um, procreating? No. You think his body's worried about digesting food? <laughs> no, absolutely not, right? So, um, let's see, I think he... There's a good ending. Yeah, he actually gets off his bike and, and runs away. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny. It's like even just watching it, it's still get like... That's true. Yeah. And you can, hear, you, know, you can hear the breathing, so... But it's a fun little video. Okay, so... Why is it that the body down-regulates digestion in this fight-or-flight state. Well, like we said, digestion takes a lot of energy to do. It's not considered mission critical. And in today's society, you're getting constantly microdosed by stress. Like, the bear chases are pretty rare, okay? But there's plenty of other things to be stressing you out, and I'm sure you guys have evolved. It's all in your mind of, like, what we don't even need to talk about, that you're basically getting constantly microdosed with stress. <clears throat> so that sympathetic fight-or-flight nervous system it's constantly kicking in, it constantly shutting off digestion, okay? And so what we want to do is do the opposite. Figure out a way to downregulate the stress response and upregulate this parasympathetic rest and digest, which, you know, we pretty much just ignore 99% of the time, right? So um, how do we do that? Okay, so you want to reduce current stress load. You want to upregulate the parasympathetic down-regulate the sympathetic, 
Okay, so here are some things you can do. Reduce your stress load, eat a healthy diet like we talked about, getting eight hours plus sleep per night, which is, you know, it's like common sense, but almost nobody does it. Um, getting regular exercise, whatever activity you enjoy, that's the one that'll be fun for you to do that. Um, other toxic substances, everyone hates to hear this stuff, alcohol, drugs, caffeine, tobacco, all gonna stress your system, okay? Um, so, other ways to upregulate parasympathetic. Meditation and breath work, okay? Focusing on the breath, relaxed breathing, essentially tricks the body into thinking that it's in a calm state. You're, you're just inducing a calm state. Um, so, downregulating the sympathetic fight or flight response. So, nervous system controls and functions, all the functions of the other body systems. This is like page four of Gray's Anatomy, okay? So, um, Essentially, every organ system is potentially affected by um, you know, distortion of the nervous system. So you take somebody like Christopher Reeve, okay? Superman in the 70s and the 60s suffers a, a tragic horse riding accident, paralyzed from the waist down. Or from the, from the, I'm sorry, from like the neck down, okay? And so Christopher Reeve, they wanted... Um, you know, they wanted to give him the best care, they wanted to give him the best quality of life that they could. Um, and, you know, and obviously, you know, he had the money to do it. Um, so one of the things, they, they didn't want his muscles to atrophy, right? So they fed him the best food, they hooked this like electrical stem stuff up to his muscles to make it contract. And um, despite that, uh, the muscles still atrophy because they didn't have, um, didn't have essentially nerve flow or, or very limited nerve flow to these muscles. And you know he couldn't couldn't move them, and they atrophied. Um, what's interesting is if the, was when they <clears> took <throat> a look at the imaging, like the MRI and the in the um, the uh, CT scan, the X-ray of his neck. What they found was that there was a piece of bone, it's about the size of like the tip of the pinky finger, that was protruding into his spinal cord. Like that was all that was needed to completely shut off. The signal from uh, the brain to the body okay so if you think about that like if only just like this tiny little bit of um, interference in his nervous system is causing this you can just think about like if there's just a tiny bit of um, misalignment in your spine that could potentially cause disturbance to the nervous system so chiropractic care returns proper tone to the nervous system, okay? Structural misalignments are gonna put stress on the nervous system in small amounts, enough to affect digestion, enough to affect pain, all these other things, okay? So it's a great way to disinhibit the digestive system. So, um, going back to this, we wanna downregulate the sympathetic, and we wanna upregulate the parasympathetic, okay? So, um, just to give you an idea, um, what we've been talking about today is um, it's two parts of my overall program for people with digestive issues, okay? Um, chiropractic care, uh, eating for optimal digestion, uh, breath work and meditation, and we have like an online community with support, okay? So um, if you're interested in working together, um, running a deal for tonight's talk, normally... Uh, an exam, an initial intake in my office is $120. Tonight, if you sign up for an appointment this week, it's $60. Okay? So, um, with that, I uh, can open it up to questions. You can turn the whole thing back on. What are your thoughts on like high sugar fruits and vegetables? Um, sure, that's a good question. Uh, humans are naturally sweet seekers. Okay? We want, like, we like the idea of sugar, like it tastes good. Now we've been told in society, like, you know, it's been deemed like sugar is bad. Uh, and I think there's reasons for that, but naturally we crave sugar. We crave sweet food. And that's like hardwired into our DNA. Because 3000 years ago, there was no, you know, um, frappuccinos, there was no Lucky Charms. Mm -hmm. Like you couldn't go outside and like, you know, pick from the, you know, little Debbie bush, right? Like you, 
you went outside and you picked fruit because that's all there was. So that signal was there. The, the, the desire to crave sugar was there because your body really wanted fruit. But now we have all these ways of getting the sugar without any of the nutrition. And so when we don't get the nutrition, the body keeps shooting off the sugar signal. Like, give me the sugar, give me the sugar, because it wants fruit, right? So I think fruit is like completely healthy food. If high sugar fruit like cause health problems, I'd be very dead, okay? And I probably wouldn't fit in this room, all right? So um, I, fruit is a completely different story than like processed foods with sugar. Um, it, you know, it has fiber, it has nutrition, it has all these things that they don't have, which which um, is what our body needs. So that's kind of a long answer to that question, but does that answer yeah, the question? Yeah, everything's okay. Okay, yeah. Now it's more than okay, it's like optimal, it's the best. Okay, so I have a question about yeah. the special deal tonight. So that's a consultation and a... An exam, exam. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then of course it goes to the next level. Yeah. So how does that compare with, you know, your monthly cost or is it a cost, special cost of the program or what? Um, we can we can talk about that one on one after if you want. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know anything processed, uh, any any animal foods, for sure, uh, meat and dairy, um, anything that's like got a lot of uh, insoluble fiber can sometimes be difficult. So like the really starchy vegetables um, can be difficult on some people's digestion. It kind of like I don't like to think in terms of like what not to eat because it's like all that information's out there, right? It's like, don't eat this, don't eat that. And then people come to me and like, well, what do I eat? Like gluten-free air sandwiches? <laughs> so I just generally tell them like, focus on, you know, whole plant foods and stay away from the ones that, that bother you. But I don't like to give like, don't eat that. Like, it sounds like kindergarten, like, don't do this, and don't do that. And like, it's just not the way I like to present the information because then people feel just like limited and, and um, feel like deprived. So if I try to stay away from feeding my three-year-old dairy, then do I have to worry about her becoming lactose intolerant? Um, so it's going to happen eventually because um, like breast milk is essentially only for babies, right? Like they're up to a weaning age and then they, they don't drink it anymore. And your child is a human, not a cow or a goat, so they don't really need to be drinking the milk of another animal. And once they're done with yours, they're like, it's like there's no point in them drinking. So, like, most adult humans are lactose intolerant because they aren't baby cows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I just want her to be able to make the decision when she's older, like if she wants to eat cheese or whatever. I don't yeah. Know, of course. Sure. Know, so. And, you know, and she may notice that it affects her and doesn't want to do it, or maybe she may have, you know, uh, yeah, obviously she'll be an adult and that'll be her choice to make, yeah. about adequate amounts of protein? Um, that's a good question. So the human body recycles 99% of its own protein, okay? So uh, fruits and vegetables tend to have around 10% for calories. Uh, the World Health Organization has said that the minimum need is about 5% of calories, so you're good within like a double margin of error, yeah. What do you think about fasting? Uh, fasting is, is fantastic. Um, I think that uh, you know it has to be done in the proper way, and if it's going to be over an extended period of time, it should be supervised. But yeah, I think it's good. What about cleansing? Um, so I think the I, think, I guess that's sort of a ambiguous um, topic. Combined. It could be yeah. So are you talking? Are you, anything in specific you're talking about, or just like for toxic metals? And oh, okay. So I mean. But the body has its own detoxification pathways, so ways to cleanse itself. It can get rid of things. That being said, the toxin load in you know modern 21st century is like way beyond what the human body can handle, right? So um, when we're adopting a healthier diet, we're taking some of that toxicity load off of off of the human organism, and then it can um, detoxify more on its own. So I don't think anything that like forces the body to detox 
is usually something that's actually toxic itself because it's stimulating a response. The best way is to just provide minimal interference to the body, feed it the best food, and reduce the stress load, and let it cleanse things on its own schedule. Because you, know, you, reduce, you dump too much toxins in the blood at one time from fat stores and things like that, the body, the kidneys can't filter it all and run into problems. So it's, it's gotta be something that's done like at a slow pace uh, so that it's like not too much for the body to handle, but the body can do it on its own given the proper conditions. And so you said you have a four prong process? Yeah. So are the processes, of, uh, the first two obviously would be your, what you do as a chiropractor, yeah. but the other portions, is that something we engage in like through the center here or how oh, do you sure. choose to Good do question. that? Oh sure, good question. So um, there's, uh, there's video modules and there's like an online group and there's this app called Boxer where essentially it's like a walkie talkie thing where you can send voice messages so I'm available on that and then there's like coaching calls because there's people who are doing the program online like remotely and then there are people here doing it. So a lot of it is like uh, over the internet essentially like video modules and online coaching and stuff like that. So are you also marketing um, products for weight loss and all that? Um, I think you know doing this program weight loss will happen but I don't specific like if people are specifically seeking just weight loss, I don't think I'm a good fit for that. I wanna work with people who like wanna get well and treat the root cause as opposed to like, cause I mean you can go down the street and they can you know, you know, chop out part of your stomach or they can <laughs> you know, put, put a belt on or some like quick fix mode to make you like lose weight you know, pretty fast. Maybe you keep it off, maybe you don't. This is more about like um, adopting a healthier lifestyle, something sustainable long term. Weight loss is just like one side benefit of it. recommend supplements? Um, there's only a few I recommend and only if you like certain vitamins and only if you test low for them vitamin D and vitamin B12 but generally in Phoenix like vitamin D is not a problem because there's so much sun. Um, vitamin B12 uh, for various reasons I, I supplement it I think most people need to um, but for the most part like supplements is not a strategy here I don't think it's like especially for the digestive stuff I don't think it works very well. What's the proportion of fruit you recommend to veggies, like twice as much? Um, I would say in volume, roughly the same amount. But like it's, it's more of like, just eat a lot of both. And like, you know, if you're wanting something sweet, you tend to go more towards fruit. If you're wanting something savory, you tend to go more towards vegetables. Just eat a lot of it and um, like, there's no like, on my program, there's no like calorie counting or anything like that. It's just like, eat a lot of it. And um, you, know, when, you know, eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full. Like mother nature doesn't need a bunch of like math to figure out like how much you need. Just whatever is appealing is usually the, the right amount when it comes to like stuff that grows on trees or out of the ground. And the last question is, yeah. cooked versus raw. Yeah. Um, I think like raw food has more nutrition in it. Um, Cooking food, like you know, especially for you know vegetables, is like you know it's still you know it's better to eat cooked vegetables than you know processed food. So I think um, you know it, it, like the difference is is negligible enough that it doesn't matter too much. So you're really different, you know. It's like uh, I just got done going through like internet, and um, I've pretty much been very acquainted with a lot of this what you're teaching and talking okay. about. But I uh, just got done listening to this guy. He's got a specific list that you need to follow. Another guy says you eat your bananas half green as opposed to the speckle. You know, like I've been speckled all my okay. life. Yeah. Right? So it's like you're like really free with your choices. And so, and options, you know, with food and that's so different. Uh, I, some people want like a ton of structure. Like tell me exactly what to eat. And they kind of get annoyed in my program. Like, well, eat what's in season. You know, what do you, what's like, you go to the grocery store in the produce section, like the blueberries look good, or the watermelons look good, like, well, it's up to you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, some people, I, like, I just, I find that most people, like, some people need the structure of, like, tell me exactly how many grams to eat at every meal, and I just don't think that that's, like, sustainable long term. Like, I think people gotta, like, get to know their own body and know what works for them, and if you give general guidelines that are, like, 
you know, not super restrictive, but at the same time, it's like, so I'm not just saying go out and eat whatever. Like, there's mm-hmm. guidelines. It's just not, like, super detailed because I don't think, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. That mm-hmm. kind of stuff drives me crazy. It's not my style, I guess. Whenever I've tried to eat fruit as a meal, it just doesn't fill me up. Okay. Like, what strategies would you um, So I think that that's a good question. Um, fruit is very calorically poor. As in, like, it doesn't have a lot of calories, but it has a lot of nutrition in it. Nutrient-dense, calorie-poor. Um, and so it takes time, especially when we're used to like heavily processed, calorically dense foods. It's like we don't need to eat very much, and um, like we get the calories we need often more than we need, right? So something like fruit has maybe 300 calories a pound. Okay, bread has like a thousand. Meat has like ice, ice cream has like 1,500 calories a pound. Okay, oil has 4,000 calories a pound. So you need to eat a lot less to get the same amount of calories. So if your stomach's used to eating these like really dense foods, it doesn't stretch very much. But your stomach is a muscle. And so as you eat more, more and more fruits and vegetables and meals of them, eventually you develop a stretch in the stomach and you can fit more food. So the normal human stomach can fit like a liter of food. Okay, it's like 32 ounces. Um, I had a competitive eating roommate back in college who could like, Eat fit five liters of food in his stomach. Not something I recommend doing. Okay, but you can easily stretch it to be able to hold two, sometimes three. Um, so, you, so over time, you build the stretch in your stomach to be able to fit uh, more fruits and vegetables. So we wouldn't just be eating a plate full like a regular dinner. We'd be eating like two plates full of fruit. Um, uh, I mean, not necessarily like for dinner. Like you know, fruit could be part of the equation. It's not like every meal has to be just fruit. Um, but like, you know, I had three mangoes and a salad for dinner. So that was, uh, yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously like as you're easing into it, it's only so much you can eat in a sitting, so you might eat more frequent meals. You might eat like, you know, cooked uh, plant foods that are a little more calorically dense, stuff that you could tolerate like, you know, rice, potatoes, stuff like that, a little more, a little more density to them, um, still plenty of fiber. Got questions? I have more if you guys don't mind. <laughs> yeah, you guys are free to like, you know, um, like doors, nobody's like locked in here, so you're like ready to go. Um, but what they are doing meditation, I suppose. Be mindful of that. Yeah, yeah, fire away with the questions, yeah. So I hear a lot about superfoods, and it seems like every day there's a different one. Yeah, isn't that funny how that works? Yeah, so <laughs> would you recommend any certain ones? Um, no, I think. Superfoods are, you know, it's just like there's always a new one. Like we got this new food from like the jungle in South America, and it's like got way more antioxidants. It's like if you just stick with like the fundamentals of fruits and vegetables, like you'll get results. Um, a lot of these things are just essentially like marketing hype to like, oh, here's a new product you gotta get. You know, and it, it, it's more of like a magic pill kind of mentality. It's like oh, if I just get this thing from like the depths of the Amazon, like uh, it'll solve my problems and. Stick to the fundamentals is what I tell people. So you don't ever eat meat? Uh, I do not, no. You, um, you don't recommend eating meat? Um, I mean, some people don't want to give it up entirely. Uh, I think the main thing is to like just crowd it out with uh, plant foods. Um, still want to eat it like once a week, once a month. Like, it, I don't want anybody to feel like it's a program that they can't do. So, like, like eight, from an 80-20 rule perspective, like, eat the good stuff for the most part. And most people find that, like, they just th- don't have any desire for meat after a while. So. But, yeah, that's, that's, um, I personally haven't eaten in 13 years. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's, uh, from a health perspective, it's, it's uh, like, pretty detrimental to health. But, and I know people, like, have, you know, habits that hard, so. Um, juicing is like like uh, it's a great way to get in uh, more fruits and vegetables. I think like for people with digestive issues, fiber is so important. They're probably better off just like eating or blending them. But if it's like juice versus like something like if it's like juice versus like a Coca Cola, like obviously juice is a better choice. Um, so it's good. I think this like 
fresh and whole is better, but it's definitely like wouldn't discount it. So do you supplement with any kind of protein? I guess I'm con still concerned about the protein. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I haven't eaten meat in. Um, 13 years. Um, so everybody stand up. I'll just show you. This is me doing one arm push-ups, okay? <laughs> Don't have a problem with the protein. I'll do these all day, okay? Uh, so, um, fish. Uh, not a big fan of the fish, honestly. Um, yeah, just so much toxicity in the ocean. I mean, if you think about, it, like, all the pollution, like, all the pollution ends up in the ocean, mercury, um, and all these persistent inorganic pollutants, uh, every pharmaceutical drug, no demand, birth control pills, it's like it's all in the ocean, it's in the fish. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think it's like a bad so idea. So I'm going to take a guess that you have a garden. I do not have a garden, I should have a garden, I should be walking <laughs> and talking in the garden. And you don't need eggs either? Um, not a fan of eggs. Like I said, I try not to talk about like what not to eat because I think that trips people out and they like get into this mode of like, oh, I can't have this and I can't have that. It's like, have it every once in a while, but focus on like what I talk about, and like, you, like, it won't even you won't even be thinking about it anymore. All right, I'm done. Okay. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much.